Foucault's couplet, which is he put at the heart of his concept of biopolitics, marks the shift from what he called the rule of the sovereign, which hinges around letting die, like not really worrying too much about how people are living, or in fact making them die, as in the sovereign's right to punish. Um, and he, he used this then to mark the shift to government or governmental rationality, which is focused more on managing populations to increase their well-being, their longevity, etc. So making people live positively, intervening in order to make live or make people live better. And this, of course, raises the specter, the other part of the couplet, the possibility or the specter of letting die, which has to do with uh, not intervening when one could, having the technology to intervene, to make people live, but not doing that, therefore just letting people die, um, or um, selecting one subset of the population for life enhancement, while abandoning another according to some rationale, which could be virtue, efficiency, the greater good, the need for discipline, race, citizenship, a whole bunch of ways in which one might select certain populations for mm. making live and enhancement and others for abandonment. Well, critics of biopolitics, I think this term tends to have been picked up mainly in the negative dimension. It tends to have been seen in terms of the... Um, uh, not in terms of making live, but in terms of, or at least in terms of the way of making live is sometimes hooked on to making die. So this idea that um, some people must die so that other people may, may live better has been picked up. But I want to be um, a bit more optimistic about biopolitics and to ask the question about uh, when are interventions made in order to make populations live or live better, and if this happens, this regard this as probably a good thing. So, you know, biopolitics as a, as a helpful thing, something one may want to have. And also to um, raise the possibility that the, that the idea of selection, selecting one population while abandoning another, although we know that contingently this often happens, to argue that this is contingent rather than necessary. It, to imagine a world in which it might be possible to not select some for abandonment, but in fact to make live more broadly, and particularly people who, um, who most need this type of intervention. So this concept of assemblage, which I've looked at in another context, I think is quite useful here, because what it leads us towards is not uh, the mastermind with the master plan or the kind of, you know, the singular force behind making live, but looking rather at um, how alliances might be forged between quite different sets of interests across classes, perhaps transnationally. So the question of who are the social forces and what kinds of um, scale and scope they have. And then the question of how the elements of such a make-live assemblage are actually assembled. How are they pulled together? What are the components? What kinds of technologies? Uh, I think that, that's the kind of empirical question that this would then lead into. So just to sum up, I mean, the question of, like, you know, what are the social forces? Big question. What are the elements? Like, what are the, what are the elements, the techniques, the practices which are being pulled in here? The how question, like, how are they being assembled and packaged and put together? Um, but also, I think, the question, inevitably, um, the question of what are their limits? And uh, definitely, uh, these assemblage are, are all... Um, highly limited, and one could even say they're sort of anti-political in the way that I describe that term in the thing I wrote on assemblages, in the sense that none of them are fundamental attacks on profit-making, capitalism, business as usual. Um, they're all to do with, uh, and none of them actually attack the core of the prob problem of the surplus population, right? None of them set out to actually pr restructure economies, um, redistribute uh, means of production, give people productive work. Like, that's really not part of this at all. But they do have to do with how can, if one recognises that those kinds of market mechanisms of enabling people to work and therefore provide themsel for themselves are not going to happen and are not happening, um, what other interventions you know, could you make, technical interventions, which would nevertheless um, make these populations live and have some sort of a future um, you know, under, under current conditions.